Is it recording? Yeah, we live. Oh, we okay. in. <laughs> Hi. What's going on, guys? And welcome back to Squid's Art Adventure. And today is the video that I promised. And basically, what I'm are we doing? doing? Well, well, I was gonna say it. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna show and give a couple of tips on how I develop my color palettes because people were interested in that. What do we got here? So we got some acrylic paints, just assorted colors. Okay. Um, they're kind of all in the same family, either a shade of red or a shade of yellow, because both of those are very important for okay. portrait painting. Well, can you tell us what colors you got here, starting from left to right? From here? Yeah. We got lizard and crimson, Venetian red, yellow ochre, cadmium red, yellow, ca it's cadmium yellow. I don't okay. know why I was going to say Go yellow ahead, ochre again. You got deoxazine purple, you got permanent violet, I think this is Hansa yellow pale. We got turquoise, cerulean blue, black, and white. Okay, can you tell me why the three different shades of red are three, like, wait, why are they so different? Well, crimson is um, cooler. Okay, it's just and, a cool red. Uh, it's like, you know, it's it's more violet. And or Venetian more purple. red is like a warm? Venetian red is warm and it's made of rust. Oh, so it's, oh, like it's a rusty, rusty color. Red. Yeah, it's okay. a rusty What's red. the last one? Uh, cadmium red is um, poisonous and has a high uh, light fastness, which means it's brighter than most colors and it's very, very powerful. Okay. Um, the reason why I'm doing this video to begin with is someone asked me a question on how I came up with the color palette for my work that I had hung in the thesis show. And I developed that color palette using cadmium red, cadmium yellow, and deoxazine purple. I think that there are more important questions. Like, how did you get this really cool hairstyle? I don't know what picture you went to, <laughs> but I imagine it's because of my mom. That yeah. might have been a baby picture. Um, but yeah, so I don't use real cadmium paints because of two reasons. Okay. First Canc reason. Cancerous. They're cancerous. Is that what you meant by poisonous earlier? Yeah. Okay. Um, second reason, they're too damn expensive. So I use the Correct. Huge What's the most expensive tube of paint you could buy in the store right now without getting like a uh, crazy special or something? Lap lapis Lazuli Blue. Okay. You can buy that at Blick. The um, tube that's about this size mm -hmm. is like $120. Wow. Why is it so expensive? It's made of lapis lazuli. Oh, like real... Real lapis lazuli, the gemstone. That? Oh, it's a gem... Oh, okay, yeah, wow. Crushed down the gemstone to a powder. I'm sorry, Steven Universe fans are probably like, why are you talking? Yeah. Me, not you. Um, I didn't even know it was a gemstone. Go ahead, I'm sorry. Yeah, so basically where my palettes start mm -hmm. is with color swatches. What are color swatches? So I'm going to show how to make some color swatches the way I do it. Um, here's an easy way to do color swatches at home. This is a tip. You can go to Home Depot, and you know in the home paint area, they have those, like, you know, paint swatches. Okay, those little cards. Those, yeah, they're free, and you can take those home. You can take as many as you want. Um, well, they used to be that you could take as many as you want. I don't know. It's been a while since I've done it that way. No one's ever over there. I don't think anyone's going to. I think you're allowed to take them anyways. So you can take them <laughs> home, and what you do is you cut them out, and you'll turn some of them into small squares, and you'll keep the other ones full size. And what you do is you'll take... Um, I'll show an example here. So Okay. Let's get in. Um, let's get in there. Let's see. What's this so now? This is cadmium yellow. Okay. You see it's very bright. Nice. Very yeah. pretty. Um and then we could put it next to just that'd be stupid. Um here we'll do permanent violet since I haven't used this. Why is it called really permanent time. violet? Violet. I'll be completely honest with you, I have no clue. Mm. It's no not, clue. like, more permanent than other colors, is it? I imagine it's not any more permanent than any other acrylic paint that's on the table right now. Mm. They'll all stain your clothes. Yeah. Yeah. And when they're dry, they're pretty permanent. I don't know. So, is, um, is acrylic more staining than, uh, what's this one made with egg yolks? Uh, tempera? Yeah. So, <sighs> tempera paint's really, like, bad, and it stains. Why do people still use it? Uh, because it's cheap. Okay, go ahead. I'm sorry. So, basically, I'm just going to do a quick swatch where you basically take the color, your base color. You're mixing with a little water? Well, I'm just doing that to thin the paint out a little bit. Okay. Um, so, basically, I'll make a square. Oh, man, this... There we go. Beautiful. It doesn't have to be a perfect square, but okay. I want it to be a little thick. So, we have a nice 
opaque. Thick or like square. thick? Um, the latter. Okay. All right. So we have our little stupid maybe comment. Um, any reason why you thinned it out with water, but then made it really thick? Is it easier to like spread, or is it, um, then you just it's it kind of just habit when I'm using acrylic paints. Mm. I tend to do all my underpainting with like really watered down paint, which FYI, you, you people will tell you you shouldn't do that. Okay, sorry. Go ahead, continue. So, and then just this is what a color swatch is. You take your next color and let's see if I can get it to not mix. So basically you would do that nice. with squares. That's like so an egg, but from the underworld. The idea is you are seeing how the paints optically mix. Okay. And you would do the vice versa. So now I would do a yellow square. So you want to do this uh, when you select two colors that you want to mix, you always will do it vice versa, right? Well, you want to see how these colors react with each other like unmixed and then from here you'll go into a mixed way so mm. the idea with doing this is you're surrounding uh one color with a lighter color which is interesting it looks darker yeah it looks darker because um surrounded well, obviously light. first of all it's already a darker color but the reason why it looks even darker is because it's surrounded by a lighter color. Okay, nice. Um, right. That's just a little bit of color theory. That's really um, cool. So I would do something like this, and I would do it with all the colors that I plan on using in the palette. So um, with the other, with the palette I used for the paint, I used cadmium red. So I saw how it would react, and then I did a full, um, like mixing chart, which I would like to pull out. But I didn't, you know, plan ahead. And I don't feel like rummaging through my dirty desk. Hey, We're you know what? We got so many more videos to do. Yeah. We'll so, see it. We'll see it. And uh, I'm pretty sure I showed it in one of my older videos. Okay. Um, so since I've already used these, I'm going to try something different completely off uh, All right. the cusp got? I haven't used what before. I'm going to go with the Cerulean That blue. is a big tube of paint. <laughs> yeah, it is. Um... This is one of like the go-to colors I used to use back in the day. Ah. Um, but I'm gonna use a color that I haven't Speaking used yet. Speaking of back in the day. <laughs> I don't even wanna know what you did. <laughs> so, what I'm gonna be doing here is um, Another cool thing about doing color swatches to learn how the colors react with each other to develop your palette is you learn about optic mixing, which is what you'll learn um, if you take color theory. Okay. Um, if I, enough people want, I could do a color theory video and I could give you guys as much knowledge on color theory as I have. Okay. Um, so the idea is, let's see, we'll take, we'll do the, you know, just like I did last time, we'll take the darker color first Okay. Which is a really nice turquoise. That's really nice. Yeah, it's a nice, a nice color. Um, and then we're gonna put the cerulean blue in the center. And the cerulean blue kind of doesn't, it looks bright, but it doesn't look any brighter than like the yellow. Okay. But it should, when I do this, look significantly brighter. Ooh, okay. Um, yeah. It's funny. It actually almost looks like a different shade of blue. Yeah, that's uh, and like especially specifically on the camera, it might not as it would in real life. Like here, it looks way more. Um, in person, it looks way. Oh, yeah, it looks because you, okay. yeah, it's optic. You were, the camera doesn't have an optic nerve like we do, and you know we could trick our brains um, with color because mm -hmm. our brains, you know. I don't want to go into science or anything. Brain games. Yeah, you know, the brain. Available on Disney Plus. Yeah. If you got Disney Plus, check out Brain Games. They'll talk about how your brain, um, you know, makes shortcuts and stuff. So we could do the same thing where we'll take the turquoise and we'll put it here. And it'll probably look almost black, which it does. It does. It almost looks as dark as the purple and the yellow. Yeah. So. Okay. Um, What's your next step? So the next step would be to... Um, develop the palette itself okay um 
which I kind of want to do a video all on its own. Yeah. Um, so I'll probably do a couple more swatches, give you guys another example. Um, but I'll do it with like colors that are closer related so you can see how it really affects it. So um, maybe let's try the... Should I do it with the yellows? I'll do it with the yellows. Do it with the yellows. We'll see if it see if I can get it to work. It'd be really funny if I just fail completely on camera. So what are the colors you're using now? So I'm gonna use the Hansa Yellow Pale and I'm gonna use the Cadmium Yellow. I have a little bit left here, but I gotta put a little put a little bit more. And then um to wrap up the V, I'll just do another I'll just do swatches with different colors that I have on the palette already, which okay. will be kind of fun. So we'll take some of this cadmium yellow. We'll go here. We have a nice square going. And everyone, you know, is like, oh, you're just putting yellow on top of yellow. But you know, it's different. It's a different shade of yellow. So this might do something completely stupid or it might do something what you didn't expect. Like become even lighter than normal. Whoa. Wow. Science. <laughs> And I mean, you could clearly tell there's a different, like, uh... Are there any real-world examples of stuff like this that we see every day that happens, like optic mixing? Um, optic mixing would be something you would see in, like, graphic design and graphics and stuff. Okay. Um, and comic books. If you like comic books, like, illustrators do stuff like this, and painters in general. Just this is kind of something... Wow. Ooh, fancy. It's kind of like... You know what's crazy? A little lackluster on the, the camera. The dark <laughs> is a lot darker on the yellow yeah. than, the, than the yellow is bright on the dark yellow. Yeah. Well... Nice. Because yeah. it's surrounded by light. So, and then we could go... You even check this out, like... Um, oh, oh, wow. What are you going to do? You going to do some crazy? You know, so you have the cerulean blue. Oh, okay. Right? All right, relax. Which... I think he's getting crazy, guys. We're going to have to cut off the video. <laughs> this is NSFW. <laughs> so, we, you remember, the cerulean blue was light on there, but, you know, this seems probably like common sense, but if you take a he's color... He's getting crazy. He's getting crazy, guys. It's not that crazy. Turn away. Please, if you have any kids... Don't let them watch. <laughs> <laughs> Now the cerulean blue looks really dark in comparison. What? So like, you could do that and vice versa. Oh, so no. sorry. Uh, cerulean blue, why? Why would you do this to me? Bam, get away. Ha ha, paint. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, like this is like, this is the fun part. You don't even have to do anything to worry about. Yeah. Keep pushing the table. What? Like, it's fun because you don't have to worry about anything. Yeah. And you could just... Have fun. Have fun. Like, who? I wonder what this would do. And then you could take your purple. Put some blue in there. Yeah, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to put a small Let's do blue. something not so cuckoo. Let's put some blue in there. Oh, I'm going to put turquoise in there. Shut up. See what happens. Because the turquoise looks darker than the purple. <gasps> it's even darker. It's like black. Whoa. Yeah! Oh, crazy. <laughs> do it backwards now. And then we could do turquoise. Pew, 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 pew. Okay. And then grab some of this. Put a little bit more in this. Um, but yeah, you know, this is just like the fun part of figuring out what colors you want. And um, this is... Uh, a necessary step in, you know, learning about color and how you're going to paint and what you're going to use when painting. <gasps> Whoa. 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 I know. Crazy. It's crazy. But yeah, this is like nothing like very special. So in the next video, we're going to be doing some further developing of the palette. And we could, we're gonna have fun mixing colors that you don't think should mix together to create wonderful colors for paintings such as this one of me with no shirt on. Yuck. It is disgusting, it's terrible. <laughs> <laughs> so, all right guys, if you like this video, give me a thumbs up, hit the subscribe button, 
hit the notification bell if you want to follow me on my art adventure. And I'd like to hear from you in the com like the comments. Let me know if you guys want to learn about some, you know, color theory. If you want to learn about doing some optical mixing and fun stuff like that. Having fun with art. And I hope to see you guys in the next video. Remember guys, keep inking. God damn it. <laughs>